The team has been stepping back in time to dig up and dust off the myth of archaeoacoustics, that ancient pottery contains sounds from the past that can be tapped into. To recreate a very possible archaeoacoustic scenario straight out of a Pompeian potter's studio, they put their freshly made, unfired pot on the wheel and stand the drum next to it. On top of the drum, they place the stylus, a piece of straw. Tari does a sound check. <laughs> Look at that. Look yeah. how much it vibrates when I do that. <laughs> Their stylus works, and M5 becomes an ancient times recording studio. Pottery record! Tari will be the talent. Let's get ready to record! Go, go. And Carrie, pottery record producer. Like this? Like, at it. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, ready? In three, two, one. Pottery record! I see little frequencies, really. They look for a sign in the line that Tori's oh, magnificent tenor-like tone has left an imprint. Definitely, look at this. Yeah, I can see it. It's actually all through here. It looks almost like a braid. Has Tori's voice been stamped into the surface? To test the freaky forensic show scenario, the team will spin an unfired clay pot on a wheel. And as it turns, they'll hold a brush against it and make a noise. This time, the drum won't be there to help. So to get the sound to stamp onto the clay, it's all down to the stylus. Potters often use straw as a finishing tool. So Grant cuts up long pieces from a broom. The longer the straw is, the better chance it'll have of vibrating and then maybe making an impression on the pot. A windscreen should help block Carrie's breath. Got your pop screen all ready? Yep. Okay. To try and focus the sound on the stylus even more, they cut back the bristles on the brush. So just one piece of straw is concentrated on the clay. A quick vocal warm up. Oh, no, 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 no. And the voice of an angel rings out. Or maybe make that the devil. That was a good one, Carrie. And I know it would be like to be married to you. <laughs> but they got their best clear marking on the clay yet. To listen, they place the now-fired Pompeii pot onto the pottery wheel and spin it like a record on a turntable. Then they put Grant's glass stylus in a groove and are all ears. Okay, get it. Whoa! Whoa, better get the RPMs right, guys. Oh, Luckily, it didn't break, and yeah. they try again. Okay, <laughs> ready? As the pot rotates, they can clearly hear the stylus scraping as it moves over the surface of the clay, but nothing else. Go to this one, because this is a, a good groove here. Grant finds another groove to trace further down the pot. Uh. <laughs> uh, that's creepy sounding. <laughs> what is that voice? As Grant puts the glass stylus onto this pottery, you can hear almost a ghostly voice. I'm hearing something. Yeah. That was like some crazy voice from beyond. They slow down the speed of the wheel. They might hear the whoop whoop more clearly. like stop. some demon possessed. I had to stop. I had to stop, okay. It's giving me chills. I okay. Mean, Are they the words pottery record, or is the team just hearing the voices in their head more plainly than usual? But there's definitely something there. There's definitely something there. It's not just static. <laughs> Putting their Pompeii pot aside for now, they're ready to test their forensic TV show pot, where they used a brush stylus and no drum. Again, the team places the stylus on a groove in the pot and listens closely. But it's hard to make out if it's anything more than just static. There's one area where I hear sort of a, eh, but it's really faint and I don't know if I'm making it up in my head. Huh, probably won't ever be a hit carry, but it's given our trio hope. There was some noticeable recording there that repeated, so, and it wasn't static. So my feeling is it's not your best way to record sound, but 
It's possible. Albert cues up a track from their Pompeii pod, where the team thought they got their best possible sound imprint. I will try to use different tools to increase the sound, to reduce the noise. He filters out the snap, crackle, and pop. I mean, already you can hear a difference. You know, yeah. It's, it's gotten rid of all that crazy static. And uh, now if I reduce it, what? we have what? something better here. Wow. <laughs> Let me the song. What That's, do you think? Yeah, it sounds like it's just scraping along the pottery. The sound is so clear, it's positively sparkling. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm getting excited. Like... Our good pot might actually have something. Yeah. <laughs> Our trio is full of anticipation. Will Albert be able to lift off any comprehensible words so we can share their excitement? I had some fairly high hopes because we did have something that sounds like an audio signal on our pot. Everyone is all ears. I hear something, but there is so much noise in, in the middle. No, no pottery record. Oh, okay. Uh, an unexplained squeak? Yes. But an easily distinguishable human voice? No. The best we got today was a squeak. And at most, it's, it's not like you get pottery record. All we heard was Looks like their pottery record won't ever make the archaeoacoustic hot 100. Sorry, kids. Them's the breaks. So you mean everything we see on TV isn't real? I'm afraid so, Tori. So what's Albert's take on the myth? You can imagine that you can record almost anything on the media that's hard enough to, to, to keep the groove, okay? Not on butter, but on anything else like plastic or wax. But if you do it inter intentionally, if not, it will be only noise. Seems as a recording medium, clay just doesn't cut it. What's your gut feeling? No. <laughs> no recording. As a Frenchman and a sound engineer? No, pas possible. <laughs> Pas possible. Pas possible.